There's a chart I saw recently that I can't get out of my head. A Harvard business professor and economist asked more than 5,000 Americans how they thought wealth was distributed in the United States. This is what they said they thought it was. Dividing the country into five rough groups of the top, bottom, and middle three 20% groups, they asked people how they thought the wealth in this country was divided. Then he asked them what they thought was the ideal distribution, and 92% that's at least nine out of ten of them, said it should be more like this. In other words, more equitable than they think it is. Now that fact is telling, admittedly, the notion that most Americans know that the system is already skewed unfairly. But what's most interesting to me is the reality compared to our perception. And here is the actual distribution. Shockingly skewed. The maker of this video got one humongous detail wrong. He made it seem as though people were asked what they think the wealth disparity is and what they think it should be, and that on average people believed that the richest 20% had 59% of the wealth, but 92% of them agreed it should be lower. That's not exactly what happened. What happened was the authors of this study gave people two theoretical societies to live in, one in which the richest 20% only had 36% of the wealth, and another in which the richest 20% had 84% of the wealth. Now, given that the average American thought that the richest 20% had 59% of the wealth, what this question essentially boils down to is, would you rather live in a society where it's 25 percentage points worse, or would you rather live in a society where it's 23 percentage points better? And given those two options, people said, I would rather live in a society where it's much better. That is not the same thing as saying that everyone agrees that 36% is the perfect wealth disparity, as Cenk Uygur of the Young Turks himself said he thought that was too low. Then, the researchers of the study came forward and said, Surprise! The two societies are Sweden and the U.S., the richest 20% of Sweden has 36% of the wealth, and the richest 20% of Americans have 84% of the wealth. So 92% of Americans said they would rather live in Sweden than their own country. There was, however, one humongous problem with the study. The richest 20% of Sweden does not have 36% of the wealth. That is a completely idiotic statement to make. Do me a favor. Go to Wikipedia and type in Gini coefficient. Click on the number 8 tab, Limitations of the Gini coefficient, and read that bottom paragraph. Extreme wealth inequality, yet low income Gini coefficient. Wealthy countries such as Sweden can show a low Gini coefficient for disposable income of 0.31, thereby appearing equal, yet have very high Gini coefficient for wealth of 0.79 to 0.86, thereby suggesting an extremely unequal wealth distribution in its society. According to Statistics Sweden, the richest 20% of Sweden has 73% of Sweden's net worth. And according to the UNU wider study, the richest 20% of Sweden had 80% of Sweden's net worth. Do you think maybe, just maybe, the authors of this study confuse the income disparity of Sweden with the wealth disparity? I mean, for fuck's sakes, the richest 10 people in Sweden have a combined net worth of $74 billion, and yet the median net worth in Sweden is 40000 This is a whole new level of hypocrisy. I mean, this is hypocrisy 2.0. You're going to sit here and criticize Americans for not knowing the wealth disparity of their own country and then set the Guinness World Record for the biggest fuck-up of all time for the wealth disparity of Sweden. What you said the wealth disparity was in Sweden was 45 percentage points off from the actual wealth disparity of Sweden. You said the richest 20% of Sweden has roughly half the net worth of the remaining 80% when they have four times more off by a factor of eight. What the authors of this study should have done is said, would you rather live in a society where the richest 20% have 35% of the income or live in a society where the richest 20% have 80% of the wealth? 
and then say, surprise, they're the same society because the wealth disparity is always more unequal than the income disparity in every country, in every point in history. Let's look at some wealth disparities for some other countries. This is from Statistics Switzerland. 1.2 million Swiss citizens, or 26% of the population, has zero net worth. 1.4 million Swiss citizens, or 30% of the population, has a net worth between 1 and 50,000 Swiss francs. Put together, 56.4% of the Swiss population has just 2.1% of the net worth. On top of that, the richest 40,000 Swiss people, or about 0.9% of the population, has 36.6% of Switzerland's net worth, more than the bottom 90%. In Germany, the richest 0.0001% of Germany has more net worth than the bottom 50% who only have 1.4% of Germany's net worth. The richest 20% of Germany also has 80% of their net worth too. Also, the richest 20% of the Netherlands has 78% of the Netherlands' net worth, and the bottom 60% have just 2%. And in Austria, the richest 20% have 74% of the wealth, while the bottom 50% has just 4 And in Denmark, the richest 20% have 99% of the wealth, and the bottom 50% has negative 18%. Okay, Denmark, Sweden, the Netherlands, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, all have strong social welfare states and strong unions, and yet the richest 20% of these countries has at least 73% of the wealth all the time. Why is this? Why do countries with such progressive policies still have bad wealth disparities? The answer has to do with how wealth itself is calculated. According to the Survey of Consumer Finances, in 2007, the median net worth of a homeowner was $234,000, 46 times higher than the median net worth of a renter. As if that wasn't bad enough, from 1998 to 2007, the median net worth of a homeowner went up 40% while the median net worth of a renter went slightly down. What does that tell you about net worth? Does that tell you that all of our nation's resources are being hogged by homeowners while renters starve to death? Or does it say that outside of owning a home, there's really not much that contributes to your net worth? The answer is B. Many people make a lot of hoopla over the fact that the bottom 30% of Americans have essentially zero net worth. But these people have no evidence at all that it's ever been any different or that it's different in other countries. They just insisted. We've already seen, with even humongous welfare states like Sweden and the Netherlands, that it's really not different. According to a study by the United Nations University World Institute for Development and Economic Research, the poorest 30% of Canada, Germany, and Australia were all 1% or lower, and were even negative for Finland, Denmark, and Sweden. And while the study didn't cover these countries, we know that it's also negative 2% for the Netherlands and is just 0.8% for France. There's really no reason why the poorest 30% of the country should have any significant share of the net worth. 1% of America has 40% of all the nation's wealth. The bottom 80%, 8 out of every 10 people, or 80 out of these 100, only has 7% between them. And this has only gotten worse in the last 20 to 30 years. While the richest 1% take home almost a quarter of the national income today, in 1976, they took home only 9%, meaning their share of income has nearly tripled in the last 30 years. The, the statistics that that man just cited were for financial net worth. Now, financial net worth excludes housing. I just spent the last two minutes explaining to you how housing is all that there is to net worth. I have never in my entire life heard a liberal explain to me why financial net worth is more important than total net worth, uh, and why housing should be excluded. But for some odd reason, 
liberals only cite the financial net worth disparity. Uh, the richest 1% have 42% of the financial net worth, but 34% of the overall net worth. Now, remember, the wealth disparity is more unequal than the income disparity. Well, the financial net worth disparity is even more unequal than the wealth disparity. I don't have financial wealth data for other countries, but you can imagine how bad they are. I do know this, though. The richest 3.8% of Canadians have 67% of Canada's financial net worth. Now, go ahead and tell me what a shithole Canada is. Yeah, exactly. Now, with all that being said, though, I just find that there's this... something I just have to say. This whole study asked people what they thought the wealth disparity was. And on average, people said they thought the richest 20% had 59% of the wealth. If they had asked people about income, that would have been amazingly accurate. The richest 20% of Americans do have 59% of the income, according to Edward Wolf, and they have 54% of the income, according to the CBO. So, what people said they thought the wealth disparity was, was amazingly close to the actual income disparity. Now, what I conclude from that is that the average American thinks that income disparities and wealth disparities are the same. That the richest share of the nation's income is also the share of the wealth, and that's why they believe complete nonsense, like the idea that the richest 20% of Sweden has 35% of the wealth, which is not even a possibility. Now, with that being said, when you look at that clip I just showed you, he did not tell you what the wealth disparity used to be. He said the wealth disparity has grown, and then he cited, cited statistics for income. And now that I think about it, two years ago, Robert Reich did this exact same thing. The top 1% used to take home about 10% of total income. Now it takes home more than 20%. And the super-rich have 40% of the nation's entire wealth. Now, with all of that being said, let's gather the info and figure out what's going on here. The average American is pig ignorant about wealth. They don't know the wealth disparity of their own country. They don't know what the wealth disparity used to be. They don't know what the wealth disparity is in any other country. But, we also know that the average American uh, does know quite a bit about income. They know how the income disparity has changed, and they have a pretty good understanding of what the income disparity is. So why do you think it is that Robert Reich and this other dude changed the subject from wealth to income? There's a plethora of evidence that the income disparity has grown. But here's the secret that neither Robert Reich or this other butthole wants you to know. The wealth disparity has not. From Edward Wolf, the richest 1% had 42.9% of the financial net worth in 1983 and had 42.1% in 2010, almost a full percentage point less. The richest 1% went from having 33.8% of the total net worth in 1983 to 34.6% in 2007. Not even a 1 percentage point increase. All of the sources say this. The Survey of Consumer Finances, which is done by the Federal Reserve, the Economic Policy Institute, which is based off the findings of Edward Wolf, and even Emmanuel Saez and Thomas Piketty themselves have not found an increase in wealth disparity. And as if that weren't bad enough, the same... same exact thing happened in the UK. The richest 1% of the UK had 21% of the wealth in 1976 and had 23% of the wealth in 2001, despite an enormous increase in income disparities. Let me read to you a quote from that UNU wider study I mentioned earlier. Quote, long time series of wealth inequality estimates are available for Denmark, France, Norway, Sweden, Switzerland, the USA, and the UK. From the early years of the 20th century up until the mid 70s, wealth inequality declined dramatically in all of these countries with the exception of Switzerland. This parallels the decline of income inequality observed over the same time period. In contrast, Wealth and income inequality have behaved somewhat differently during the last three decades in developed countries. 
Increases in income inequality have been strong in the U.S. and U.K. and have been observed in most OECD countries over this time period, while the wealth share of the top 1% also increased in most countries during this period. The increase in wealth inequality appears to have been generally weaker than that of income inequality. For example, in the USA, which is the country we're talking about, while there was a mild increase in wealth concentration between the mid-70s and the mid-80s, and a further increase in the late 1990s, inequality then fell, and the share of the top 1% in 2001 at 33.4%, according to the Survey of Consumer Finance, did not differ much from the share of 33.8% in 1983.